member of the 1940s all-decade team, Marion Motley is now on the NFL 100 all-time team. The mammoth Motley, 238 pounds of football dynamite. Motley football's version of the atomic bomb. A year before Jackie Robinson signed with the Dodgers, Marion Motley signed with the Cleveland Browns along with fellow Hall of Famer Bill Willis. Motley averaged 5.7 yards per carry, and he was a unanimous All-Pro selection in 1948 and in 1950. Yes, yes, yes. That man right there is my great uncle, Marion Motley. My great uncle on my mother side of the family. My mother, her first name is Marion and her maiden name is Motley. My grandmother named her after my great uncle. And I couldn't be more proud to have Hall of Fame royalty in my family. My extended family is very proud as well. And I gotta be honest, I don't say it enough. I don't talk about my great uncle enough and I should because what he was as a player, as an athlete and as a man is highly commendable. My great uncle, the Pro Football Hall of Famer played for the Cleveland Browns from 1946 to 1953, took one year off, and then played one year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He won four AAFC League championships, and he won one NFL championship in 1950, a year before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in professional baseball. My great uncle, Marion Motley, along with Bill Willis, along with Kenny Washington, and along with Woody Strode. Those four men debuted in professional football in 1946. So there you have history being made. So it's important for people to understand the role my great uncle and the other three black men played in society amongst their own people. Black people were not attending professional football games before my great uncle debuted for the Cleveland Browns. But when he started playing along with Bill Willis on the Cleveland Browns team, black people started showing up and giving a lot of love and support to them. They were their heroes. This is way before the civil rights movement movement of the 1960s. This was the mid to late 40s and early 50s when there wasn't a whole lot of hope when you walked outside your house anywhere in America for black people. But my great uncle played a pivotal role in keeping people's spirits alive on and off the field. My great uncle was a pillar in the community Needless to say, the racism and discrimination that my great uncle faced every day, leaving the house, walking up and down the street, carried over onto the field. He used to always say, look, man, there was a lot happening and it was, they were doing a lot to me after the play and the referees hardly ever, ever did anything about it. But I held my own. I got back up. I looked those players, those defensive players in the face and said, hey, look, I know what you did and I'm coming right back at you the next time I get the football. And when I come back at you, I'm going to run you over. And he went back to the huddle and said, give me the ball. And that's exactly what he did. He ran over a lot of people, he ran over a lot of people, man. He famously made a guy swallow his own tongue. He hit him so hard. And if you look at the video of my great uncle playing football, it's quite obvious that the evolution of the professional football game was very primitive during that time period. My great uncle was out there playing with no face mask. 
he just had like some a leather helmet slapped on his head some shoulder pads that were probably paper thin some thigh pads and knee pads that were probably equally as thin and he was out there running over people just to play at all during that period of time in the 40s and and even before the 40s into the into the 50s and late 50s and early 60s you definitely had to bring your lunch pail we took a lot of abuse anything that they gave out we took it but we dished it back to them i'd get my licks in i kicked butts and took names i can tell you that and it made them respect the too. So I think I did what I had to do and did it right. I tell you, growing up, I really looked forward to seeing my great uncle at the family reunions. I didn't see him much, but when I did, I would always run up to him and hug him because he had this really big pot belly and I was I was not not that tall. I would my head reached right at his belly. So whenever I hugged him, I used to just put my my cheek and my face up against his belly and give him a real tight hug. And he would kind of hug me back and, and you know, and, and show his love. And, and and I just really those 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 bear hugs that I got around his belly was was memorable. And I still to this day, to this day, I still think about those hugs and uh, what they felt like. And just his power, even at that elderly age that he was, he still had that massive presence and power in him. And I really, really miss that. There is a documentary that was done a handful of years ago titled The Forgotten Four about my great uncle and his role in professional football, along with the other three men. So research it, look for it. It is very, very good. I'll leave you with a story that my great uncle left me with, literally left me with. He was in the hospital and not doing very well. And not too long after he told me this story, he passed away. But I'm glad he was able to tell me this because it gave me an even more understanding of the type of man he was during his prime years. So the story goes, my great uncle was on the road getting ready to play a game in New York. And he was at a restaurant. And at that restaurant was sitting across from him, Joe DiMaggio, the legendary baseball player for the New York Yankees. And one of the most popular athletes in America at that time. My great uncle had a son who was a fan of Joe DiMaggio. So he decided to approach Joe and ask him for an autograph for his son. So when he approached Joe and asked him for the autograph, Joe told him that he couldn't sign it. He just didn't sign autographs and he wasn't gonna give my great uncle an autograph. So my great uncle said, okay, walked away and went back to the table. And the way my great uncle explained it was that he felt really disrespected that Joe couldn't make an exception for a peer, a, a, a fellow athlete for an autograph. It was more about, it wasn't from a fan, it was from a peer of his, a professional peer. I get it, I understand. I totally understand. During, just where the country was during that period of time, what was going on with the two sports of professional football and professional baseball. Those two men, they were both giants in their own respective sports. And my uncle just wanted a little bit more respect. Put some respect on my name. Y'all understand me? When y'all say my name, put some respect on it. Subscribe, follow, share. So you can run and tell that.